Welcome back to JW's Backyard. Now, I've been seeing a ton of posts lately on the Facebook groups about people having exploding eBay or Amazon 30 series torque converters. And I've bought at least 10 over the years. And little did I know that I had a ticking time bomb on my hands. And I found out how deadly these eBay or Amazon 30 series torque converters can actually be. And it's the one deadly flaw that these torque converters have that causes this. And it's that they're cheap enough that any idiot can buy them. And in reality, these torque converters are exploding because the bolt for the crane that holds this driver on is coming off and it's allowing this to come apart. Now there are quite a few people in the group saying it's exploding just because it's cheap Chinese junk. But quality is not the problem in this situation. It doesn't matter if you have a genuine comment. If you do the same thing, if you don't install that crank bolt properly, this thing will come apart. So today I'm gonna to show you how to install your crank bolt if you don't have an impact and get it tight enough that it's not gonna come off. I'm gonna show you a few tips and tricks, go over some common mistakes that people make installing this crank bolt and go over some of the reasons why these mistakes happen. But let's get into it. So you wouldn't think one bolt would be that hard to figure out, but every bolt on this Predator 2 and 2 is metric except for the crank bolt and the torque converter mounting bolts. So the crank bolt and torque converter mounting bolt are 5 16 by 24. And the best place local to me that I found that you can find these 5 16 by 24 bolts is Home Depot in the specialty bolt bins. And they have all different kinds of lengths. You got a two inch, there's a one inch, uh, I've got some two and a half inch, I think I got a three inch. But this is a common mistake people make that is they use the wrong size hardware on these cranks. So this is a 5 16 by 24. And you can see it threads in that crank just fine. And just to show you that the rest of the hardware on this engine is metric, let's take off this side cover bolt and let's check the size on that. So you see that this side cover bolt is a uh, eight millimeter by 1.25. So that's a combination of metric and standard on one engine. So something else that tricks people is they will try to use the hardware that comes with these 30 series torque converters. And they'll think that all this torque converter is made for this engine, so they sent me the right size hardware, but that's not the case. These companies send metric hardware with these torque converters. So if we check the size, this is also an eight millimeter by 1.25. And this can trick some people because this is close enough in size that it'll thread in a couple threads and then stop. So it looks like it fits and some people may think, oh, it just got tight and go ahead and tighten it down the rest of the way and strip out that crank. So it may feel tight, but it really isn't and it's stripped out. And after a little bit of riding, that bolt will back out and that driver will come apart. So make sure you're using the right size hardware. So another common mistake people make is they don't get a long enough bolt and don't get enough thread engagement. So if you look at the end of the driver here, there's quite a bit of gap between the end of this driver and the crank down in there. So you have to get a pretty long bolt to be able to get enough thread engagement for that bolt to stay in. And I uh, usually have to use at least a two inch bolt. And if you use the washer that comes with these torque converters, that's gonna take up even more space. So we got our two inch bolt here and you see we're already hitting the crank there. So that's plenty of thread engagement to keep that bolt in and keep it from coming out. So something that's also helpful is putting a little thread locker. Um, I'm using blue here. 
I think blue is good enough for this scenario. And that'll help keep that bolt in and keep it from backing out from vibration. But I still see some people that are using the right size bolt. They got good in thread engagement. They're using thread locker and the bolt just keeps coming out. And more than likely, those people just aren't getting that bolt tight enough. So I'm going to show you a couple ways to tighten this bolt by hand and keep this crank from turning or the engine from turning over while you're trying to tighten that bolt. And it should help you keep this driver on and keep it from exploding on you. But what I would say is if you don't have an impact and you're working on small engines, you're like working on your cars, they are worth the investment. You know, this Cobalt, 150 bucks with the tool and the battery. You can get them for cheaper. You can probably go to Harbor Freight and get something that's substantially cheaper that'll still do the job. But let's get into it. I got three ways to show you how to tighten this bolt without an impact. So you're gonna take the boot off the spark plug and then we're gonna take that spark plug out. And of course I've already loosened this just to make it easier for this video. And before anybody says that this torque converter is installed incorrectly, the plates aren't lined up and all that, the, I just put this torque converter on very quickly to show how to tighten this bolt. This isn't how to install this torque converter correctly. It's just how to install this bolt correctly. So the first method involves using this rope. This is just some pull cord uh, cut off of the spool. And you're going to stuff it down in the spark plug hole so that when that piston tries to come up and compress, it's not going to be able to because that rope's in the way. So we're just going to feed that rope down that spark plug hole. And this is actually the same method you use if you want to change your valve springs without taking the head off and you want to keep those valves from dropping down in your engine. You just stuff some rope in there. Okay, and leave your little tail hanging out so you can get the rope out when you're done. All right, that thing is tight and that should not come out. And something else to add is make sure you're buying some good quality bolts. Uh, make sure it's at least grade five at minimal or grade eight, which is even better. Don't buy the cheapest bolt you can find because I see a lot of people having bolts that snap off. And if you get grade eight, that thing is not gonna snap off unless you do something crazy. Now the other method is using a piston stop like this. They have all different types of designs of these things. Some of them have a little rubber tip on them. Some of them are made of all plastic, but this one was like 10 bucks on. It was either eBay or Amazon. And what this does is it screws down into that spark plug hole and extends down into that cylinder and keeps that piston from coming up. Now, the ones with the rubber tips, you know, they have rubber tips to keep it from damaging anything inside, but I think this will be fine. And just so you can see what it does, we have a spare head here. This is actually a Hemi head, and the engine we're working on is a non-Hemi version, so you can see the valve cover shapes are a little different. But you just screw down into your spark plug hole, and this is a 14 millimeter piston stop if you're confused on the size okay once it's tight you just screw that inner bolt down and you can see on the back side that that is extending down into the cylinder so as you're turning that bolt and that piston's trying to come up that'll stop the piston
right, so we got that piston stop in and we should be able to tighten this bolt without the engine trying to turn over. All right, and that thing is on there. And another way to do this is to get a belt wrench like this and wrap it around the driver. Now that driver is locked to that crank now and if you tighten that belt wrench down, you can hold that driver in place and keep that and keep the engine from turning over while you're tightening this bolt. But it involves you being pretty coordinated with two hands. But it takes a little bit of extra effort to hold both of them at the same time. And you can see that held that in place while we tighten that bolt down. Just so nobody can say that, you know, say if the belt comes off, the driver can expand more and those springs and weights could make their way out the side. I'm gonna rev this up and you can see how much clearance you have between that outer housing and the inside. And you'll see that there's no way for those weights to make it out of that little gap. Even if that belt came off those separated and the springs happen to break all at the same time. Now you see, it looks like we might have damaged that driver a little bit or overextended it, but that gap was so small that even if that belt came off and those springs broke, those weights aren't coming out and that thing is not exploding. But we're gonna do a little experiment. I'm gonna loosen this bolt up and you're gonna see what happens if you have a loose bolt and that bolt happens to back itself out. Then you'll get, then you'll get that exploding driver that everybody's talking about. Let's just hope I find all of the pieces. Now you see, with that loose bolt, this thing started to come apart. As you can see, the weight slid all the way out. If I'd have left it running for much longer, those weights would have finally come off. And I don't even know where the bell went or the bolt. But moral of the story is, make sure that bolt is tight. This is not a quality issue with those cheap Amazon, eBay torque converters. This is an installation problem or that bolt backing out. But that's all I got for you today. I hope that helped. Make sure you like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. I'll see you next time.